Welcome CyberMDs to another lecture on the cardiovascular system. Today we're going to talk about arteriolosclerosis. Please be sure to like, comment, and or subscribe if you find this helpful at all so that we can continue to provide free medical education resources for students around the world. Additionally, please let us know if there's anything you think that we can improve on as we want to provide the best possible educational experience for anyone using our videos. Let's get started with our discussion on arteriolosclerosis. Arteriolosclerosis is a type of arteriosclerosis. Remember that all forms of arteriosclerosis result in some sort of thickening of the walls of the vasculature. Arteriolosclerosis, in particular, is a condition characterized by the narrowing of the small arterioles, and it is divided into two types, hyaline and hyperplastic arteriolosclerosis. The first type, hyaline arteriolosclerosis, is caused by long-term benign hypertension or diabetes. In this type of arteriolosclerosis, the proteins from the serum end up in the walls of the vasculature. Their presence results in a thickened vasculature. You can see this here on the screen. You have a thickened vasculature right here with this narrowed lumen. Now, I like to conceptualize this pathology by thinking of the long-standing hypertension pushing the proteins out into the walls of the vasculature. With regards to diabetes as the etiology for this, high levels of blood glucose or blood sugars can lead to damage of the walls of the vasculature. Now, the pathway in its entirety is much more complex than that, but you can conceptualize this as these high sugar contents in the blood damaging the cells and making the vasculature leaky, allowing proteins to seep out and deposit. Histologically, again, as seen on screen, this can result in this pink hyaline substance. And as the walls thicken, it can result in a number of issues, most of which follow the same history of disease that we've been discussing about arteriosclerosis in general, which is going to be reduced vessel caliber, leading to some sort of end organ ischemia and damage. The classic example is glomerular scarring, which is known as arteriolonephrosclerosis. Again, that's arteriolonephrosclerosis. And that is a condition that will progress potentially to chronic renal failure if not managed. The second type, hyperplastic arteriolosclerosis, is a byproduct of malignant hypertension, which again is just excessively high blood pressures, typically greater than 180 over 120. Instead of pushing protein out into the walls of the vasculature, in this pathology, the body responds with the proliferation of smooth muscle cells as a response to the large amounts of stress that are being placed on the walls of the vasculature. This hyperplasia causes a layering of smooth muscle that gives the vasculature what is classically known as an onion skin appearance histologically. You can see it here on the screen. There's, there's a cell right here, and then you go a little bit further out, and there's another layer, and you go further out, and there's another layer. So that's what they're talking about when they talk about an onion skin appearance or layering of smooth muscle uh, around the walls of the vasculature. So, similar to hyaline arteriolosclerosis, the narrowing of the caliber of the vasculature can lead to end organ ischemia or damage. Now, the classic example of this end organ ischemia is uh, that it can lead to an acute renal failure in which the kidneys, when viewed grossly, would have a quote-unquote flea-bitten appearance. Now, what they're talking about in a flea-bitten appearance is all these little dots on the surface of the kidney. Uh, and, and that's what they're describing as being flea-bitten, is all these little specks on the surface of the kidney if you view it uh, like grossly, uh, like during autopsy. Uh, in addition to these things, the extreme stress on the cells can lead to necrosis. Specifically, this is a, going to be a fibrinoid necrosis, uh, which may subsequently result in hemorrhage. To prevent the development of arteriolosclerosis, it's essential to control hypertension and diabetes, the two primary causes of these conditions. Maintaining a healthy lifestyle, regular physical activity, balanced diet, stress management, all of these things can help prevent the development of these conditions. Uh, early detection and treatment of hypertension and diabetes can also reduce the risk of developing any sort of arteriolosclerosis. 
So, it's important to remember that arteriolosclerosis is a condition that affects the small arterioles, and it can be divided into hyaline and hyperplastic subtypes. Hyaline arteriolosclerosis is usually associated with long-standing benign hypertension or diabetes, while hyperplastic arteriolosclerosis is associated with malignant hypertension. Both types of arteriolosclerosis can result in reduced vessel caliber with end-organ ischemia, and they can lead to serious consequences such as chronic renal failure or acute renal failure. Thanks for tuning in to this lecture. And again, please be sure to like, comment, and or subscribe if you find this helpful so that we can continue to provide free medical education resources for students around the world. Additionally, again, please let us know if there's anything you think that we can improve on as we want to provide the best possible educational experience for anyone using our videos. See you all again in the next lecture.